Okay, time now to go to the money desk. Devin Morgan standing by. Good afternoon, Devin. So I see mobile companies are scrambling to deal with the ongoing disruptions because uh, the networks as well are suffering from the ongoing power cuts uh, by, by ESCOM. But there are many, many frustrated customers out there. Yeah, and, and that's the thing they have to deal with. I mean, we've seen it since the intense upgrading of these power cuts over the weekend and it's affected a, it's had a domino effect in the economy right through of course the mobile operations uh, as one of them so it's precisely what is happening at the moment South African mobile operators are working around the clock to ensure connectivity remains stable amid the massive power blackouts now you know, those mobile companies are forking out billions of rands to mitigate the chaos caused by these power cuts. I want to bring in MTN Chief Executive Officer Charles Mulapisi to talk to me. Charles, thanks very much indeed for making the time to chat to us this afternoon. I mean, it's not a great time at the moment because on the one hand, you have some very irate customers complaining about drop calls and network disruptions in certain areas. And on the other hand, it's you guys trying to mitigate the damage caused by these ESCOM power cuts. It can't be very easy at the moment. Yeah, look, I mean, Devin, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, this, is a, this is a very difficult and challenging period. Um, I think I will say for us, not just as mobile operators, but I think for us as a country, um, I think what we are faced with um, is really unprecedented in terms of the South African context uh, from an MNO perspective. Mm. But what I would like to say is this, is that it is opportunities and, and times like this where we have to show proper leadership, uh, be steady in our approach, uh, be resilient, um, and provide guidance um, on how to be able to navigate this very challenging period. So now you, you, you did mention that, you know, of course the priority is, is the customers, um, but you must understand that the kind of infrastructure that you provide, it is actually critical infrastructure. Um, you know, so the ability for businesses to provide services, customers to make calls, um, you know, it really affects the general functioning of many businesses, you know, across the land and breadth of our country. So major challenge, um, balancing the team, uh, making sure that the team that is hard at work 24 mm -hmm. by 7, um, that we execute uh, to try and save the day. Um, I will do uh, like to give the confidence to the MTN customers that the issue is being well managed under the circumstances. Yeah. Give them the comfort that we are working very hard to deploy batteries uh, in areas where we believe that we need to deploy gensets. We are continuing that aggressive program to do so. And we have just not started to do that now. This is the program that we have been doing, you know, let's say since then, you know, towards, I think, quarter three last year. And we will continue on this thing. And eventually we believe that we will provide a, a better and a similar service under the circumstances. Yeah, I, I want to talk about that in a moment, but just take us through, Charles, what is happening at these towers that are affected by the power cuts. I mean, as I understand it, you have these batteries there, but there isn't enough time to charge because we have one power cut after the other. Just take us through what happens at these towers during a power cut. Yeah, very, very good point, Devin. Um, remember, this power cut comes in stages, so whether it's a stage two um, so the period uh, of when you don't have um, ESCOM on the tower um, you know is stage based um, and you have what you call the battery autonomy so the ability of the battery to be able to retain the charge and to be able to function outside power um, so the longer period we have in terms of load shedding this is now when you're dealing with stage four stage and stage six mm. that you are now not allowing enough times for the batteries that you have deployed, um, which function very well, uh, but now you're not allowing enough time uh, because of the frequency of the cards, uh, don't, the batteries don't have enough time to recharge. So even when power returns um, and then it's taken up in the next you know, few hours, then you are str you're gonna struggle because you have not resourced the batteries enough. I mean, I think many South Africans will identify with these things in their own homes today that those who have deployed solar solutions and better solutions in their homes know very well that, you know, when we get to stage four, the sustainability of the batteries to be able to provide capacity start to diminish. Yeah. And this is what we're faced with. Under stage two, stage four, generally, um, you know, we're able to keep the networks going. 
and provide the required level of avail availability. You know, so, but stage six is quite challenging, uh, just simply because of the land. Yeah. So you're sitting around with the maintenance team at, at MTN trying to come up with a national, you know, preventive combat uh, strategy uh, right. to prevent this network blackout. I mean, w what do you do to prevent that, Charles? Sure. First of all, uh, Devon, is, is a, a big, big thank you to my team, um, you know, who are working 24 by 7, you know, around the clock, um, trying to mitigate this. Um, we operate in multiple regions. So we're running a central war room um, here from, you know, from our central office. We've got sub war rooms um, in all the regions where we operate. Um, and from here, we discharge instructions um, in terms of areas of focus. Uh, we look at critical sites. Uh, we look at sites that maybe carry more traffic. We look at hub sites. Hub sites are sites where other network towers connect to. Uh, we prioritize those. Uh, we look at areas, for instance, key infrastructure like data centers, for instance, we prioritize those. But we are fortunate, you know, we've got partners. Um, we've got a number of OEMs who are functioning and working very well with us, and I have to thank them. You know, whether you are Ericsson, ZTE, or Huawei, uh, who are working very hard with us in multiple regions where they're providing equipment and many services to help us to be able to navigate this. Mm -hmm. But a big, a big uh, a, you know, a thank you really goes to, to the MTN team who have really, really been rock solid in helping us to navigate this. And myself as a leader, uh, supported by, by my exco, uh, were constantly in engagement, uh, my CTIO as well in engagement. And of course, we have you know, the MTN you know, you know, group exco that you need to continue to engage with and the MTN board. But it's a very well mobilized team, uh, very well resourced. Um, it's just that you know, the scale of the infrastructure and the scale of the blackout um, it is quite challenging, um, but I'm comforted by the manner of resourcing and the number of people who are working on this to try and make it, you know, eventually bearable. Okay, I'm going to come in there just in the interest of time very quickly. Charles, are there some areas that are affected more than others? I mean, the reason I'm asking this is because we want to know what consumers are going to expect since you see yeah. that on social media, you know, the, the irate customers and, and some of the comments are still not yeah. dampening down. I mean, given the fact that the power cuts are continuing. Are there some areas that are more prone to these type of, of network disruptions compared to others? And are you simply just upping the battery capacity at these relevant towers? What are you doing? I mean, when, when we're faced with a, a problem of this scale, then the trick is prioritization. Um, so we prioritize maybe critical areas that carry more traffic. Uh, we make sure there's areas like that that are covered. So you might talk about inside out kind of approach, um, you know, and you look at sites that generate less traffic that are not so busy. Um, and those sites, you know, you're not going to be able to prioritize. Um, but as we speak today, you know, over, you know, 75% of our sites have batteries, uh, but we are prioritizing areas. I mean, there are areas like the Eastern Cape where we are struggling even beyond load shedding. And I guess Devin also, what is not very helpful at this particular stage is also the vandalism on our sites. I mean, mm. you know, the challenge is that the more batteries you deploy, uh, sounds like you are now creating another economy on the site where now we've got a whole lot of vandalism. So on top of load shedding, uh, we're dealing with sites that have been damaged, people trying to get the batteries out of our sites. Um, you know, so I'll say mostly uh, rural communities, and sadly so, uh, are affected because obviously the prioritization goes to critical sites. But, you know, we say in MTN that everyone deserves the benefits of a modern connected life. Uh, we're covering the entire South Africa, that's our prioritization. Um, but we're going side by side according to priority metrics that we have. Um, the Eastern Cape worries me a lot, you know, uh, particularly Umtata, um, and it's a very critical market for us. So I want to appeal to our customers in the Eastern Cape that I'm working very hard with my team to try and fix the problem. Our customers in the north are also highly affected. Again, I want to appeal, um, you know, that we're working very hard as a team to try and alleviate those problems. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some areas in Chwane as well, uh, in Chwane where we're having few problems. Um, again, let me reassure you that we are deploying as many resources as possible, first of all, to protect the sites, then to deploy batteries as well. So it takes a whole lot of machinery to do this. Um, and also, if you think about it, Devin, is that, you know, in areas where we're not deploying gensets, then there's a challenge around diesel 
a theft that we now have to manage that otherwise we didn't have to deal with. So you're thinking about a very you know, big scale uh, operation, uh, first of all, to deploy and then to protect and to replenish. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, uh, Charles, very quickly, I mean, you know, it's, it's sad that it comes at a time when MTN has decided to do these private 5G sort of installations around these ports for companies. And of course, that speaks directly uh, to intervention in the economy, sites that have barriers, the ports I speak about, the railways that I speak about, uh, that uh, it's a barrier, it's, dis it's malfunctioning is a barrier to economic growth. Um, very quickly, I mean, that sure throws a span in the works, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, first of all, let me say that we, we are the leading operator when it comes to provision of 5G, uh, particularly private wireless networks. Um, we have signed about 14 MOUs uh, with a number of mines. Um, and when you think about mines, we think about safety, we think about critical infrastructure. Um, but I guess, Devin, what would be slightly different in this case is that these are private wireless networks, which means yeah. that these are networks which are localized in those particular areas. Then you are able to protect them because they sit within the perimeter uh, of a particular organization. So there'll be proper protection. Then there'll be battery power. There'll be you know, um, you know, any form of energy or mix to protect them. Um, so that part of the business is not really affected um, simply because these are cluster-based the cities you know, in isolated organizations, so we're able to manage that a little bit more better than when we've got an isolated site in the rural areas where we have to move around, let's say, you know, from one region to the next to try and fix. Um, but I will say that, you know, again, we're excited about our role that we're going to play when it comes to private 5G wireless networks. And I think as MTN, like I've always said before, that we see 5G not as a network. Um, and I think South Africa have a lot to be excited about. Mm -hmm. And I know that, Devin, that all the challenges that we face as a country, you know, our role as leaders during this particular point in time is to constantly try to create a positive narrative to counter current, um, the current, you know, wave and waves of bad news. That's what we're supposed to be doing as leaders. So the more challenges we face, we are going to dial up on the good news. We're going to dial up on doing the right things. And I always say to my team that we will face the challenges of our country, we'll face them with hope and we'll face them with resilience and a very opportunity and a mindset. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. Well, thanks very much indeed for making the time. Uh, Charles Molapisi, the CEO of MTN, on the impact of the uh, power cuts on some of the towers uh, that MTN has and the network. Well, very quickly.